The Ale Burke class destroyer has been a cornerstone of U.S. naval power since the end of the Cold War, escorting high-value capital ships like the super carriers and striking at land targets using Tomahawk missiles. The latest iteration of the Ale Burke, known as Flight Three, represents the most substantial transformation of the design since entering service. The Burke has been evolving continuously to meet new threats while retaining a common hull and general design principles. Flight Three does not abandon the Burke concept, but pushes that concept to the absolute limits of what the original hull can support. Where earlier Burkes focused on incremental improvements, Flight Three is defined by a fundamental power spike. In radar capability, power generation, cooling systems, and combat system integration, driven primarily by the evolving demands of air and missile defense, sonar capability has also been improved from the earlier flights. Flight Three is not a routine upgrade; it is core to allowing the destroyer force to adapt to hypersonic threats and increasingly capable peer adversaries. This video focuses on the major changes in terms of design and capabilities on the Flight Three Burks from the previous flight. However, it's useful to briefly consider the trajectory of the Ale Burke class as a whole. Early Burks were optimized for area air defense and open ocean escort missions, built around the Aegis combat system. And the AN Spy One passive electronically scanned array radar. Subsequent flights, particularly Flight Two A, expanded the ship's mission set by adding a hangar for embarked helicopters, improving anti-submarine warfare capabilities, and increasing vertical launch capacity to 96 from 90 on the previous flight. Yet, despite these enhancements. The underlying sensor architecture, both in terms of radar and sonar, remain rooted in the late Cold War technology. By the early 2010s, it became clear that incremental improvements to the Spy One radar and legacy power systems would no longer suffice against increasingly more capable cruise missiles, ballistic missiles, and hypersonic threat. Flight Three Ale Burke emerged as the U.S. Navy's answer to the cancellation of the CGX cruiser program, which had been intended to deliver a large, purpose-built air and missile defense warship. Rather than pursue a new hull, the Navy chose to adapt the proven Burke design to carry a next-generation radar to replace the Spy One radar as the primary combat radar. This decision imposed severe engineering constraints on a rather old Burke hull, forcing designers to rework power generation, cooling, structural strength, and internal arrangements while preserving commonality with the earlier Burkes. The result is a ship that outwardly resembles its predecessors, but is fundamentally different beneath the skin. At the heart of the Flight Three. Is the AN Spy Six air and missile defense radar, the most significant radar upgrade ever introduced on the Ale Brook. Unlike the AN Spy One, which it replaced and which relied on the passive electronically scanned array technology, Spy Six is an active electronically scanned array radar built from the radar modular assemblies. These are self-contained radar modules. The Spy Six V1 on the Burke Three uses 37 of these modules arranged into four fixed arrays, one placed on each intercardinal direction on the ship superstructure. The new transmitter receiver modules use the new gallium nitride semiconductor technology, allowing for a higher power density than the gallium arsenide. Based components in parts of the Spy One radar. The Spy Six radar panels each have a diameter of 4.3 meters, 
which is greater than the 3.7 meter diameter of the SPY-1 radar panels. This alone points to a more powerful radar. To say nothing of the power gap between active and passive electronically scanned arrays, which, to be clear, is massive. Compared to the SPY-1, the active electronically scanned array of the SPY-6 provides vastly improved sensitivity, resolution, and range. Raytheon has described the SPY-6 as being roughly 30 times more sensitive than the SPY-1, enabling detection of objects half the size at twice the distance compared to the SPY-1. This improvement is not simply a matter of seeing further. It allows the ship to track large numbers of stealthy threats, discriminate warheads from decoys, and simultaneously manage ballistic missile defense and traditional air defense without the trade-offs that constrained earlier systems. And the ability to manage multiple different threat types is a key point. The earlier Ale Brooks often had to prioritize either air defense against traditional cruise missiles and aircraft, or ballistic missile defense, particularly in complex scenarios involving multiple types of threat. Flight 3, on the other hand, is designed to conduct both simultaneously, forming a cornerstone of the Navy's integrated air and missile defense structure. Again, this is enabled by the more powerful SPY-6 radar and the associated upgrade to the Aegis combat system. This capability is particularly important in the Pacific and the North Atlantic theaters, where ships may face overlapping threats from aircraft, hypersonic missiles, and ballistic missiles. By equipping destroyers with a more powerful radar that can do many things at the same time, this fundamentally changes how the ship fights. The destroyer changes from being simply multi-role, able to do different missions, to omni-role, able to do many different missions at the same time. While the Flight 3 Brooks are the first to be equipped with the SPY-6 radar, the Navy is also planning to refit some of the Flight 2A with a smaller and less powerful version of the SPY-6 radar as well. The scaling down of the active electronically scanned array radar to be fitted on these older ships reflects the underlying constraints associated with power, cooling, and space availability on these ships. So, these models of the SPY-6 will use fewer transmitter and receiver modules compared to that on the Flight 3. Still, even the scaled-down version of the SPY-6 will be much more capable than the SPY-1 radars currently found on the Flight 2A. It must be said that this upgrade remains a work in progress for the Flight 2A and will likely take many years. Anyway, back to the Flight 3. The SPY-6 air and missile defense radar required major changes to the ship's engineering plant. The radar's power demands far exceed those of the SPY-1, requiring about twice the electrical power, forcing an upgrade from the previous 3 MW generators to 4 MW units operating at higher voltages. In parallel, the ship's cooling capacity for its radar and electronic systems was substantially increased, including upgrades to air conditioning plants and internal distribution systems. These are critical to ensuring that the new systems do not overheat, so that the new radars remain functional and reliable and do not suffer damage. These cooling changes may not be visible to casual observers, but they are among the most consequential aspects of the Flight 3, as they create the margin needed not only for the SPY-6, but also for future systems that have yet to be fielded. In this respect, Flight 3 is designed as a growth platform, albeit one operating near the physical limits of the brick hull. 
The radar and power upgrades are tightly coupled with the introduction of the Aegis Baseline 10, the latest evolution of the combat system that has defined the class since its inception. Baseline 10 integrates the Spy 6 and the ship's weapons and enables the full realization of integrated air and missile defense, allowing the ship to seamlessly manage sensor data, assign weapons, and partake in cooperative engagements with other platforms. This includes networking with other Aegis warships, aircraft, and shore-based systems, underlying the Navy's emphasis on distributed warfare and sensor fusion. While earlier Brooks have received successive Aegis upgrades, the Baseline 10 represents a pretty big step upwards, aligning software, sensors and weapons into a unified system for high-end conflict. Weaponry on the Flight 3 remains broadly consistent with the previous Flights 2A in terms of vertical launch capacity, with a total of 96 Mark 41 VLS cells. But the real change lies in what those cells can deliver. One of the most important developments is the integration of the Tomahawk Block 5 missile, which builds on the already flexible Block 4. Block 4 introduced in-flight retargeting and loitering capabilities, allowing commanders to redirect and alter strikes in real time after launch. This is very important for striking maritime targets, which are constantly moving and changing directions, especially for a relatively slow subsonic missile like the Tomahawk that takes time to reach their target. Block 5 expands the nascent maritime strike capability of the Block 4, incorporating the appropriate radar seekers designed to attack surface ships. Block 5 basically brings back the anti-ship variant of the Tomahawk that had largely disappeared since the mid-1990s. Equipped with an improved seeker and navigation enhancement, Block 5 allows surface combatants to engage moving enemy ships at long range, restoring a potent offensive capability against peer naval forces. The maritime strike capability is especially significant in the context of great power competition. Flight 3 destroyers are no longer just defensive platforms protecting carriers. They are increasingly central to sea control and sea denial missions. By combining long-range sensors and naval strike weapons, Flight 3 ships can actually present credible threats in addition to the long-standing role of the Ale Brook class as defensive warships. Anti-submarine warfare has also received renewed focus. And while some of these capabilities are shared with late Flight 2A ships, their integration into Flight 3 reinforces the ship's multi-role character. The TB-37U multifunction towed array sonar represents a significant enhancement to the passive detection of submarines at long ranges. Towed array systems benefit from being physically separated from the ship's own noise, improving detection range and the clarity of signals emitted from the submarine. A good towed array system is a must-have in addition to the bow sonar for any ships that wants to be a serious anti-submarine platform. The TB-37U towed array provides several enhancements over the existing ANSQR-19 tactical towed array sonar used on many of the Burke class, including longer range coverage, better detection capability, and better reliability. The combination of a new towed array sonar system and two embarked MH-60R helicopters means Flight 3 Brooks are well positioned to counter increasingly quiet and capable submarines. The first of the Flight 3 ships, 
the USS Jack H. Lucas represents the outcome of more than a decade of design, debate, and engineering compromise. Its delivery and subsequent achievements of initial operating capability in 2024 marked a milestone for Flight 3 of the Burke class. With ambitions to procure two dozen Flight 3 destroyers, the Navy is signaling its intent to rely on these ships as the primary surface combatants well into the middle of the 21st century. It's worth noting that the Burks of the Flight 2A variant have been receiving a very brutal-looking upgrade that enhances their electronic warfare capabilities, but which left them looking very bulky and frankly quite unusual. The same upgrade so far have not yet been seen on the Flight 3. Whether that means the enhanced electronic warfare system are built natively into the Flight 3, or that it will be added later, remains to be seen. Anyway, hope you found this video informative. Please hit like if you enjoyed the content. Thanks, and see you next time.